Two of you are more than I bargained for. One of us is usually more than people bargain for. Are you sure you're up to this? Oh, yes. There's nothing I don't know about catering. Look, I've got a very important dinner tonight. I need waiters. Waiters? waiters? That's right. I've been booked by the Duke of Kumquat to prepare a romantic meal for himself and a female companion. And between you and me, I think he's going to pop the question. I hope you'll both be very happy together. Thank you. Not to me, to his lady friend. Now this is my big chance to break into society catering. And I want to seize the opportunity with both hands. I can't afford any slip-ups. Get it? Got, Got it. it. Good. So where would you like us to start? With the food? No, the food's all prepared. Follow me. Vegetables? Check. Napkin? Check. How's he going to pay? Check. <laughs> Just a little joke. Us caters are renowned for our sense of humour. I've got the horse's doofus. Oh, nasty. Or d'oeuvre. I couldn't find the canapes, though. Canapes? Them either. Oh, no. I must have left them in the fridge. I'll have to go back for them. I've got to pick up my wife's frock from the dry cleaners anyway. Now, you know what to do, don't you? I want everything to go well. You know us. That's what I'm worried about. And no slacking. Beg pardon. The woman I am entertaining tonight has more than enough money to cover all my outstanding bills. When we're married, it'll all be mine. <laughs> anyway, bye for now, blinky old chap. Oh, you handsome brute, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who the blazes are you? We're waiters. Uh, and what do you think you're doing? We're waiting. We've been waiting for ages. How long have you been at the door? Um, about five foot eight in old money. Or approximately 170 centimetres since we went in Continental. I see. Long enough to overhear my telephone conversation. Not really. Only the bit about you being broke and wanting to marry an heiress to get your hands on her fortune. But if you're worried about us telling on you, you've got nothing to worry about. Discretion is our middle name. Is it? It is. Well, I never. And you won't again if you tell anyone what you heard. I know you'll find this hard to believe, but I can be a very nasty person indeed when I'm crossed. Oh, we believe it. Good. Now you go about your business and keep your noses out of mine. Well. Well indeed. Are we going to tell anybody? What, tell anybody that the Duke's a lying, cheating, rotten, bad-tempered scoundrel, you mean? Yes. Nothing to do with us, is it? One more thing. Yes? When Miss The Van arrives, show her straight to the dining room and then come and get me. Understood? Understood. Understood. Uh, excuse us. That wouldn't be Miss Evadne The Van, would it, by any chance? It would, though it's got nothing to do with you. Little Evadne. We haven't seen her for years. Not so little as I remember. Do you remember a second birthday party? I do. It seems like only yesterday that she was bouncing you up and down on her knee. Not to me, it doesn't. I thought she'd gone to live in America. Now she's back and she's going to marry a duke. Not if I've got anything to do with it, she isn't. I thought you said it had got nothing to do with us. It wasn't, but now it's personal. She's Dan the Van's niece. That's almost family. Exactly. And there's no way I'm going to let a scoundrel like that take advantage of an almost member of the Chuckle family. Follow me. Where are we going? To find a way of stopping his little game. Oh, there you are. I thought I'd better bring my wife's dress inside. It may get crumpled in the van. Don't mention van. What's up? We've discovered something about the Duke's intended fiancée. What's that? It's Dan the van's niece. The Duke's only marrying her for her money. <sighs> I see. Dan's niece, eh? Tricky one, that. Oh, well, the canopies are outside in the van. I'd better fetch them in and lay them out before dinner. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't understand, do you? We can't let Dan's only niece and heir to Dan International marry a fortune-seeking aristocrat. It's the front door. I've got it. It'll never work. Trust me, if it does, we'll prevent the marriage and you'll still be in the high-class catering trade. Welcome to Comcock Towers. The Duke is expecting you. If you'd like to follow me... What time's dinner? Dinner will be served shortly, madam. Good. It's been a long flight. I could eat a moose between two flour mills. Uh, the Duke suggested that you take your meal in the morning room. He's of the opinion that the smaller character of the room will bring a certain romance to the meal. What are we having to eat? Um, I'll bring a menu. <clears throat> Did I hear the front door? I'll go and check. If it's Mr. Van, show her straight to the dining room. I'll be in there waiting. Right. She's in the morning room, he's in the dining room. Now for stage two. What's stage two? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? One of you's got to be the Duke and the other one if had me. We'll never get away with it. Where there's a will, there's a way. Speaking of wills, I hope you've made one. Just get changed. Your menu, madam. I'll leave it with you. Well, was it her? Uh, no. Who, who, who was it then? Um, it was a door-to-door -door salesman. But don't worry, I told him you got plenty. <clears throat> Look at me. We'll never get away with it. Why not? They've never met. This dinner was arranged by a friend of the Duke's. He's no idea what you look like. Which is more than can be said for me. Good. I ask you, do I look like an heiress? No. You look like a caterer in a frock. Not for long. Here, put this on. Voila! Now what do you think? Now he looks like a caterer in a wig and a frock. That's it. I'm not doing it. No, oh, you look fine. Tell him he looks fine, Barry. You look fine, Barry. There. I suppose I am doing it for Dan. <laughs> That's the dining room. Come on. Oh, just a minute. I haven't done my nails yet. There's no time for that. This is it. Yeah. Try and do something about your voice. Oh, something like this. <laughs> just be yourself. Miss Evadne the Van, sir. We meet at last. May I say you look... Shocking! Pardon? <laughs> just shocking weather. For the time of year, I mean. Is it? Dinner will be served shortly, sir. But you don't go! But I must. I have other duties to perform. And I wouldn't want to get in the way of you two lovebirds. Oh. Oh. How did it go? Fine. Now it's your turn. Hang on. What do I say? You think of something. The Duke of... Dookie, oh. baby! Likewise, I'm sure. You're even more handsome than I was told. I have your picture here, though it's not a very good likeness. I've been ill. You look swell. Now, which one first? It was a cheeky oh. Duke. It was a cheeky Duke! Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. Dinner is served. About time, too. You can go now. I can serve myself. Well, what about the Duke? What about him? He can get his own. Dinner is served. Oh, madam, has he popped the question yet? No. Is everything all right? Fine. <laughs> Your dinner, sir. Have you asked her yet? No. I'm scared of the answer. Think of the money. Money isn't everything. How 
How's it going over there? Fine. I think he's about to propose. Good. Only we need more food over here. The only time she leaves me alone is when she's eating. Be back in a tick. Of course, I, I usually winter in Saint-Tropez. I remember one year, Blinky Bartram said to me, Listen, are you going to ask me to marry you or what? I won't bother if it's all the same to you. <gasps> if you think I've sat through this lot, dressed like this for nothing, you've got another thing coming. <gasps> You'll propose to me if it's the last thing you do. <laughs> now, Dookie baby, I think you've got something to ask me. I have. You have. Oh, I see. Where did you get your shoes? I'm talking about an offer of marriage. Can we talk about it later? No time like the present, and besides, we're all out of food. I'll get you some. Don't bother. We've got other business. Well... Okay. Okay. What did you say to her? I think she fancies me. Well, there's no accounting for taste, is there? I'm about the only thing in the house she hasn't tasted. Brulee. I take it the wedding's off then. Dan'll be pleased. Oh yes, I'd better make a phone call. Let him know everything's all right. <laughs> Dookie! I think it's time we weren't here. I don't think we want to go through another day like that one. Still, it was worth it in the end. The wedding's off and Dan's fortune is safe. <laughs> He'll have something to say about it, I'll be bound. He's got something to say about it, I'll tell you. I've just been speaking to him. Happy, was he? <laughs> How can I put it? He was livid. Apparently, he's been trying to get Evadne married off for years. He was the mutual friend who arranged the dinner. Now you've gone and put the kibosh on it. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Did you have anything else to say? Only one thing. He asked how our Spanish was. I think we're off to South America. <laughs> <laughs> 